Shalom, Yasharala. I want to give infinite honors to my Heavenly Father, my great King, Yahweh Wai, Yahweh Shai. I want to give double honors to our teachers, the apostles of Great Millstone, who are worthy of double honors, who our Heavenly Father has poured his spirit on to teach us his glorious gospel. And uh, Shalom, my fellow labors in Yahweh Shai, pushing this truth across the four winds in this fine hour with fear and trembling, making that calling and election assured by abounding this labor of love. Shalom, Yaku. Uh, on this clip, man, I'm a liking. Uh, what David King, our beloved King David did uh, through his lifespan, and what he did is he endured all type of tribulations, trials, and he went through various dire straits. And Yahweh Shema Shai always defended him and pulled him out of that murk and mire. All right, Jacob's trouble is going to be uh, no different than what King David went through, but I think it's going to be greater. It, it's not safe to say. And you can like them. You can like them on uh, one another. But what we about to go through is going to be ten times greater than what King David went through because of technology, and because of this uh, non-melanated uh, piece of shit that we're under. He's diabolical. Okay, so I'm um, liking. But go through the precepts, liking what King David went through, through what we're about to go through, man. Lord willing, is that a fine to the here? So I'm gonna jump off. You um, know. Psalms 37, start from the top. All right, Psalms 37, the Psalm of Dawa Dai. Fret not thyself because of evil doers. And the so called white man is the evil doer. I mean, the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. Uh, he creates this society that's lawless for the Israelites uh, so they could fall. All right, he, uh, nothing's been hid from him. All right, so with that being said, he knows that we're the only opposition to his throne, so he wants to always be in that power seat and set himself up as the most high. So what do he got to do to us? He got to give you that wicked drink. And then when he gives you that wicked uh, drink, his philosophies and all of his dogmas, then once you drink them and you become drunk, then he comes to the most high and, and accuse the brethren, all right? And the scriptures say, woe to the man that does things like that, all right? A man that does things like that uh, has, is, is worthy of death. That's why he's going to go into slavery for a thousand years. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, all right? So when you see a man sitting in a power seat, because women are hypnotized by power, but you, men are too, all right? All, all, all people are. When you see somebody, they got the prestige, the majesty, they... They got the gold, they got the silver, they got the mansions, all right? And also, they got the power. You you, you run a red light, you're going to see this devil, how he uh, shows you that he has the power to throw you in the, in the dungeon. And people that the peoples of the earth will see that, and they become envious towards them. But our Heavenly Father told us, you few good men, us hopeful elect men, don't be envious of this piece of shit, okay? All right? He said, don't be envious of him when you see him um, spreading himself like a green bay tree. All right, for they soon shall be cut down like the grass, and wither is the green herb. And this is only for a short time, a short span, according to Revelation the twenty first chapter. He said this devil's gonna be led out of his uh abyss, and he's gonna rule for a little season. Okay, trust in your power, and do good, and that's what we gotta do. We gotta uh, have self analysis of ourselves, and make sure we keep our hands clean unspotted and unblemished from this world, all right? That's what we got to do to, uh, to to be comforted, protected, and nourished by the Most High when all hell breaks loose, okay? So so shall thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shall be fed, okay? So that's what we got to do to when dire straits come upon us, for him to defend us. That's what King David did, all right? He trusted in Yahweh by Shema Shai's word, and he made sure he did good. All right? What is good? Loving your brother. All right? Not lying on your brother. Not deceiving your brother. Manipulating your brother. You see your brother in need, you go help him. Okay? Those are doing good. In our day and time, you go prophesy. All right? Build up the kingdom of heaven. All right? That's what that's the, that's the only good you could do in these last days. Okay? All right? And when you do these things in sincerity and truth, when all hell breaks loose, light, all hell break loose on your life, and it will in the coming days, if you're thirsting for righteousness, all right? When you're looking in the wicked, perverse world and you're not connected to the matrix, the matrix is going to attack you, okay? 
Mr. Smith is everywhere. Mr. Smith is that demon. He's, he could jump into every human connected to the Matrix, all right, to make it bad on you, make to, to, to the point where everywhere you go, people are going to be trying to kill you, okay? Now, let's see what happened in, in uh, the lifespan of King David, how many times Mr. Smith tried to knock him off. All right, I'm going to start off in uh, Psalms. I'm going to go over uh, a few chapters. All right, this Psalms 45, 41 and 5. My enemies speak evil of me, all right? Now, look, when you look at uh, Esau with his propaganda machine, what is he going to do? He's going to speak evil of the Hebrew Israelites, all right? He's going to demonize it, and he's going to use it to pull out this, push this vibration that we are uh, domestic, domestic terrorists, that we are high treasonous, okay? That's what he's going to do in the coming days. We are not ignorant to say he's devices, all right? When shall he die? And his name perish. Now, that's what we ultimately want, all right? That's the faith and the patience of the saints, all right? But we have to wait. We got to be patient, okay? That's one thing I've been learning lately. You got to just be patient and wait, okay? All right? And if he comes to see me, he speaks vanity, all right? When he gets on that tube and use Don Lemon and... Anderson Cooper, they're going to be saying these Hebrew Israelites, they're, they're going to do these false flags and they're going to say we're uh, misogynists, we hate uh, people with alternate lifestyles, they're going to say we're hate mongers, they're going to say we're, 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 um, we, we, we want America to fall, they're, gonna, they're just going to say all type of, you know, we do and we are, all right, but they're going to push that American jargon, that that beast, using that, that, that beast philosophy and demonize us, all right? Because most Americans are simpletons and they're going to believe everything they hear, okay? And it reads, if, and if he come to see me, he speaks vanity, his heart gathereth iniquity to itself, perpetual sin, all right? This, 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 we're going to get demonized because guess what? We're not going to get tranquilized, which is uh, sin. We're not going to get microchips, which is sin. We're not dancing to that sinful nature and that uh, Esau wants all of the humans to rock out on, okay? When he go off abroad, he tell of it. So this devil is going to tell and lie on us, all right? He's going to lie on us. And all of the inhabitants of the planet uh, that don't have the spirit of Yahweh Shema Shai dwelling on on them are going to believe it, okay? So they're going to attack us like King David was attacked. King David was a fugitive, man, all right? And we're going to see, man, you have people out there trying to knock them off. You know, it had citizens. When they seen them, they wanted to tell on them. They, they told on them to get them killed, all right? This say he had the, uh, the whole Israelite army attacking them, looking for them, all right? So this same thing is going to happen to us, all right? All that hate me whisper together against me. And against me, they do devise my hurt. You see, all of these uh, media outlets and all the people that has TV tubes in their house, that look at the TVs, when they see when you, you, and your family members, family members is in that number. Your so-called loved ones is in that number. They're going to put bounties on our heads too. They're going to offer you up for your hurt, Okay. By, by, by that time, you know, that, that chip will be implemented, so that bounty they're going to get going to go on that damn chip. You know what I'm saying? So you got to be ready for this, man. All right? Just like King David. King David was ready for everything that came up on, on him because guess what? He had that relationship, and he was a man after the most high's own heart before he ever went through tribulation. And guess what? His name was shit in the earth. All right, he he was a fugitive, so everybody was looking at him like he wasn't shit. In fact, let me give this example. Let me go to uh, First Samuel twenty five. We'll start at verse two, and it reads, "And there was a man in Maon whose possessions were in Carmel, and the man was very great. I mean, he was rich, and he had three thousand sheep, a thousand goats, and he was shearing his sheep in Carmel." All right, and now the name of that man was Nabal. All right, now look, let's let me let me show you this. Nabal didn't have no relationship 
uh, with King Saul when you read these scriptures. Nabal was just an inhabitant in Israel, all right, that was uh, aware of the information that was going out about King David, like every other Israelite that was in Israel, okay? So let's see what happened when King David went to him for help, all right? I'm going to go down to verse... Uh, Verse 10. All right, now I'm going to give you a quick synopsis. King David sent his uh, servants to go tell Nabal that, look, man, we, when your people are in, your, in, your, in the fields uh, feeding, watering your goats and feeding your sheep, that we are out there protecting them so nobody could steal from your flock. So he asked him, look, man, uh, you know, since we've been helping you, can you help us, you know, with some sustenance? All right, and this was that, that nigga's response. All right? And Nabal, Nabal answered David's servants and said, Who is David? And who is the son of Jesse? There be many servants nowadays that break away every man from his master. All right? And that's a treasonous. You break away from your master. You committed the, uh, you committed the act of high treason. And that's how everybody that had that information was looking at King David. They was looking at him as a high, a person that committed the crime of high treason. Okay? He didn't know Saul personally. He didn't know David personally. He was inhabiting Israel, and that was the information that was going throughout Israel. If you see King David, turn him in or do something to him. All right? But he's wanted dead or alive. All right. Then he, he went further on to say, shall I take my bread and my water and my flesh that I kill for my shears and give it unto men who I know not whence they be? All right. He's saying, so shall I take what I've worked for hard and give it to a guy that's wanted by the government? That's how the people are going to be dealing with us. Now, it's not going to be like that in every situation. You know, you're going to have situations where people are going to give us aid because the Most High is going to put the Spirit on them to give us aid. You know, everybody's not going to be like him because, look, when you read down, his wife Abigail gave him that aid that they were looking for. So the Most High have situations uh, where the Most High have even a fucking Edomite, a full-blood Edomite refreshers, you know. So, but... The vast majority of the people connected to the matrix, they're going to be in the spirit of Nabal, okay? They're going to be in the spirit of Nabal, all right? So let me get another precept. Uh, this is, uh, shit, I just got to go over a couple of chapters. This is Psalm 1 first, first Samuel 23, and I'm going to start at verse uh, 9, all right? And David knew that Saul practiced mischief against him. All right? Now, look, in this scripture, Saul is likened to the president of the United States. He's likened to the, the corporate bankers, the movers and shakers, all right? And he deemed David a high treasonous, okay? So he wanted David dead or alive, all right? And he said to Abathur the priest, bring hither the apart, all right? All right, and see, and, and we're going to see what happened with this iPod, iPod, you know. Then he said, then said David, O Yahweh, power of Yasharala, thy servant have certainly heard that Saul seeketh to come to kill it, to destroy the city for my sake. All right, now listen, King David just saved this city from being destroyed uh, by the Philistines, all right? He just fought to save these people, to show you how fucked up people are. And just so you, you could just imagine how it's going to be in our day and time. Let's see what these people was willing to do to David out of fear of Saul, all right? Out of fear of the power that Saul had, out of fear of the skeptic Saul had, all right? This is what they would do to a man that just delivered them out of death, all right? And it reads... Then said David, O Yahweh, my power of Yasharala, thy servant has certainly heard that Saul seeketh to come to Kila to destroy the city for my sake. Will the men of Kila deliver me up into his hand? Will Saul come down as the servant have as thy servant hath heard? O Yahweh, power of Israel, I beseech thee, tell thy servant and thy Lord, tell thy servant. And Yahweh, tell thy servant, period. 
All right, Salakia for that. All right, and Yahweh said he would come down. Then said David, will the men of Caleb deliver me and my men into the hand of Saul? Now, these are people that he just delivered out of the hand of the Philistines. Let's see what happened. And the Lord said, they will deliver thee up. All right, so just imagine our day and time when this great red dragon come down and our people are in fear. Our people fear power. Most people fear power. What are they going to do? They're going to deliver us up. Nothing new under the sun. In fact, let me go up to verse 4. All right? All right? This is this is verse 4. David inquired of Yahweh yet again, and Yahweh answered him and said, Arise, go down to Kela. I will deliver. Go down to Kela, for I will deliver the Philistines into thy hand. And so David and his men went to, to Kala and fought with the Philistines and bought away their cattle and the smoke with the great slaughter. So David saved the inhabitants of Kala. All right? So he just saved these people. And they feared Saul so much that they was like, fuck him. We're going to turn his ass in the, in, in, in the Saul out of fear of our lives. All right? So you see all of the turmoil and 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 the the, the shit that came down on, on our beloved king, man. And guess what? He held fast to the words of Yahweh Shema Shai. Now let me get to the air part. All right. This is where David having that relationship with Yahweh Shema Shai came in. Though he was going through great tribulation, Yahweh was always with him. Okay, so we got to have that spiritual a part in our mind, in our being, because guess what? You've gained, you've had this relationship with the most high. See, the most, Dave knew he was always a step of ahead of Saul. Why? Because of the relationship he built with the most high when he was in the damn uh, fields uh, watching them sheep. Okay, when he was in the fields watching them sheep, when he was a young boy, he built that relationship with the Most High, and the Most High knew who the fuck he was. So he just wasn't calling on the Most High when he uh, got into a, 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 a sticky situation. He'll call on the Most High when things were good, when things was all fine and dandy, okay? So the Most High would hurt him and took care of him when all hell broke down on his ass, okay? So that's... Well, we are supposed to learn from that, man. When he went and dealt with that epop, all right, what happened? Uh, Yahweh answered him. And we're going to need Yahweh to answer us because we all are going to be put in sticky situations. All right? We all are going to be put in dire straits. All right? And you want the most high to answer you just like he answered King David. All right? <coughs> this is first seven. Chapter 22, verse 3, and it reads, And David went thence, then this is going to show that that information that Saul put out uh, amongst the inhabitants of the lands during that time, everybody knew that David was a future, fugitive, even the other nations, all right? This is uh, 1 Samuel, chapter 22, verse 3. And David went to Misab of Moab, all right? Now he in another country. And said unto the king of Moab, let my father and my mother, I pray thee, come forth and be with you till I know that Yahweh will do for me. So Saul was so fucking pissed off, he went and hid his parents. Now just think about this. What's going to happen to our parents and our loved ones? All right, they ass is going to die anyway because when them devils can't find us, they're going to go for what's close to you. All right? And let's say if you still got that emotional connection, They'll be able to use and hold, dangle them over your head. You coming to try to save them and get your ass knocked off. And the devil still going to kill your people. All right? That's why you got to know your enemy. All right? He'll use them. Hey, we got your daughter. We got your mother. All right? And you'll go back over there, man. They'll still kill them. They did kill you. All right? That's why the spirit, the scriptures say the spirit is, uh, the word is a defense. Wisdom is a defense, man. Okay? So guess what? The king, of, even the king of Moab, knew that uh, that King David was a fugitive in the earth, and a bounty was on his head. Okay, and it reads, and he bought forth, and he bought them before the king of Moab, and they dwelt with him all the while that David was in the hole. And the prophet 
Gad said it to David. All right, see the Most High was always with him while he was in these uh in these dire straits. Abide not in the hole. All right, this is him being always a step ahead of Saul. We gonna always be a step ahead of Esau unless it's our lot to be a martyr. All right. Outside of that, he's not gonna touch a hair on our head because it's written. All right. Depart and get thee into the land of Judah, Yahweh, and they and Dawadah departed and came into the forest of Haraf. When Saul heard that David was discovered, and the men that were with him, all right, like it's Saul to the American military, all right, to the corporate bankers, so on and so forth. Shit. All right. Now Saul abode in Gibba under a tree in Ramah, a Ramah, so like you, having his spear in his hand and all his servants standing about. That's how Esau, that's how that great red dragon looking at us right now. That bitch got his spear in his head. He ready to come down on us with great wrath, okay? Because he know he got about a short time. Then Saul said it to his servants that stood about him, Here now, you Benjamites, with a son of Jesse, give every one of you fields and vineyards, and make you captains of thousands and captains of hundreds. Now, when we look at them captains of thousands and captains of hundreds, these men got families. So just think about how, how many people was looking at King David as a, a high treasonous and was ready to kill him, okay? That word spreads fast, all right? You got thousands and thousands of, of soldiers, all right? And everybody know this was common in the land that King David had to be killed, all right? Because the king sent out the decree, all right? That all of you have conspired against me. And look, anybody that spoke well of King David, look, look how, how this twisted the bit fellow was thinking. He's he was he had that demon on him so hard, he was like, All of you have conspired against me. He was bugged out. He had that foul ass spirit on him. Okay? And that none of you show me that my son have made a league with the son of Jesse. All right, now his son Jonathan was righteous. And there is none of you. That is sorry for me, all right? And this is how twisted and demented the so-called white man thinks, all right? Saul was rocking in the spirit of, of the wicked one. A show of it to me that my son have stirred up my servants against me to lie and wait for this day, all right? So when you look at that, uh, he got the whole Israelite army against him, all right? Then you know you got however they put, when they put out decrees throughout the whole nation, all of the inhabitants of the land looking at him like he's a high treasonous. This is what our beloved brother had to go through. Let me find, uh, here goes, the definition of public enemy. All right? Public enemy number one. And this is from Western.com. And it says, the nation's most wanted criminal. So you, brothers in this faith, you got to know that you're going to be the nation's most wanted criminals. Okay? They're going to deem us criminals, insurgents, all of those buzzwords. The most dangerous threat to society. They're going to say we're the most dangerous threat to society. Okay? This is how we're going to be looked upon. All right? Uh, and this is these laws, these Americans, uh, U.S. Code, HouseGovernment.com, and these are the laws uh that govern us to this day, all right? And amendments and so more. And this is chapter 115, and so, so on and so forth, so like you, all right? This chapter 115, treason, sedition, and subversive activities, all right? Now, let's see the penalty for treason, all right? Who, who, here goes, all right, that's a S2381, all right? That's that, that, that law number, all right? And this is what it says about treason, all right? Whoever owed allegiance to the United States levies war against them, and we are, all right? Technically, we are. When you, when you teach the truth of the scriptures, Babylon must be destroyed, all right? Babylon must be destroyed. Happy is he, what King David see, happy is he that have done them as they've done us, all right? All right, that's the spirit, okay? 
And then it reads, whoever ordered allegiance to the United States levies war against them or adheres to their enemies. All right? But we're the enemies. We're the arch nemesis. That's how they're going to look at us. Giving them aid. All right? So look. Let's talk about the inhabitants of the land. What this decree is about. All right? So you don't even have to be the enemy. But if you give them aid and comfort within the United States or elsewhere, you is guilty of treason. All right? And shall suffer death or shall be in prison no, le no less than five years and fine under the title, but not less than 10,000. That's going to be bullshit, all right? Because they about to tighten up these laws, so we go, we, go, we, we about to be up under the Draconian laws. So if you find a the Hebrew Israelite in that day, they going to kill your ass straight up and down. They going to kill you, all right? And, and that's how they going to be looking at us. They going to be looking at us as as High treasonous, all right? That's how they're going to be looking at us. And this is going to be the penalty. You say you shall suffer death, okay? This is the world we're living in, I can, all right? Shit. But guess what? Key David, Key David was uh, always... Delivered. All this turmoil we read about, he was always delivered, and we're gonna see why. Okay? This is uh first Samuel chapter 30, and uh we read verse uh six through eight, and it reads and Then Ashik Akish called David and said unto him, Surely Yahweh liveth, thou hast been upright, all right? See, this is how you get comforted. This is how when this gray red dragon come and they, they these soldiers come, these UN soldiers come, these NATO soldiers come, whoever they may be, your uprightness is what's going to have Yahweh with their heads of protection around you. And thy going out and thy coming in with me, the host is good in my sight. For I have found no evil in thee since the day of thy coming unto me until this day. Nevertheless, the Lord's favor, the Lord favor thee not. Wherefore now return and go in peace that thou displeased not the Lord of the Philistines. Okay? And and, and David said unto Achish, but what have I done? You ain't did nothing wrong, okay? And what has thou found in thy service so long as I be with the to this day that I might not go and fight against my enemies of my Lord the King. All right, now look, you gotta understand when this devil come down on us, we ain't did shit wrong. All we doing is reading out the scriptures and living according to the scriptures. So King David, you gotta understand when Saul was coming against him. So now King David did end up fucking up, but during this time when Saul was fucking him, fucking with him, he had done no wrong. He had went into Bathsheba. He had did that. Uh, counted the people. All right? He hadn't even seen yet, okay? So they was coming down on him for nothing. His hands was clean, okay? All right? So let me go up to verse 1 and 3. All right? So, wait. Did I just read the wrong thing? Salakia, man. I read the wrong chapter. Salakia. Salaki, this is what I wanted. Salaki, hey, that was still good. I read that though. You gotta understand, David. Hey, that was the spirit. I read that. As you can see, David had not committed no transgressions, and he had gone off when all this hell was coming down him, on him. So it's a such thing as uh, uh, suffer for righteousness' sake. That brother was just suffering because he was righteous, and Saul was wicked. While Saul envied his righteousness. Okay. Now this is First Samuel chapter thirty, verse six. And David was greatly distressed, all right? For the people speak, spake of stoning him because the soul of all the people were grieved, every man for his son and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in Yahabah Shema Rashad. That's what we're supposed to be doing, all right? When you go through the di dire straits, when persecution come up against you, all right, and you've done everything you could do, you know, you try to, uh, do things your way. The only thing you got left is to pray. And what that's what Psalm said, uh, our beloved King said in uh, Psalms 109. You got to give yourself to prayer uh, and, and, and wait upon the Lord. 
Okay? That's what was going on with King David. His his old men that was with him was talking about stardom. The men that was running with him in the wilderness, they had lost their faith and they was talking about stoning the brother. But let's see what happened. And David said unto Abathur the priest, Ahalamic's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the apart, all right? And Ahabitha brought hither the apart to David, apart to David. And David inquired of Yah at Yahweh, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? All right, and that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to do nothing without prayer. Make no decisions without prayer. You gotta, especially in that day, every move that you make, you want that voice from Yahweh to guide you. All right, that's what you're supposed to be practicing and getting that voice now. Like I'm going through something right now, but and I was very terribly vexed, terribly stressed. But the most high told me everything gonna be all right. Your hands clean, you ain't did nothing off. All right, your how we're gonna fix it. But when you try to force it yourself, you fuck it up. But when you sit back and let your how handle it, hey, you gonna see. Okay, he's gonna handle it. All right, and that's a key. And King David had that relationship with Yahweh Shema Shai, where when he called to him. Yahabashim Abashai answered, Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue. You see? You want Yahweh to answer you like that, man. You want to have that relationship where he answered you. And guess what? David, his fucking life was in the balance. His life was literally in the balance. And Yahweh was with them and answered him, For thou shalt surely overtake them, and with thou fail recover all. And what was going on here is, uh, I'm going to read it. You know what? I'm going to just go to the top and read it. Uh, verse chapter 1, 1 Samuel chapter 1. And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Z Ziglag on the third day, the Amalekites had invaded the south. And Ziglag had smitten and Ziglag and smitten Ziglag and burnt it with fire. And had taken the women captives they were there that were therein. They slew not any either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burnt with fire, and their wives and their, wives and their sons and daughters were taken captive. All right? And then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no power to weep. That's understandable, man. You come home, see your house burned down and your wife and your children gone. That's a reason for a man to weep bitterly, man. That's a reason. But guess what David did? What it said? Let me skip back down to verse 6. All right, I'm going to just go to the point. But David encouraged himself in Yahweh, his power. That's what you do when you get put in them sticky situations like that. Now, let me show you how 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 magnificent Yahweh is. While David then was fighting this war, why when the most I told him, go pursue them and get your children back, let's see what was happening with Saul. All right? This shit was happen, happening simultaneously. So David went out to fight them fucking Amalekites, right? Now let's see what was going on with Saul. All right? Uh, this is 1 Samuel 31, and I'm going to start at verse 1. Now the Philistines fought against Israel. So while David and them was fighting against uh, the Amalekites, Saul and them was fighting against, and, and guess what? David and them pursued the Amalekites and beat them and got their families back. Now let's see what was happening with Saul while, uh, while they was at war. All right? The same man that was bringing all this hell down on King David. Now the Philistines fought against Israel. And the men of Israel fled from before the Philistines and fell down slain in Mount Gilboa. And the Philistines followed hard upon Saul and upon his sons. And the Philistines slew Jonathan, Abinadab, and Machizua, Saul's sons. And the battle went sore against Saul, and the archers hit him. And he was sore wounded of the archers. Then Saul said unto his armor bearer, Draw thy sword and thrust me through therewith, lest these uncircumcised come thrust me through and abuse me. And they did just that, because they cut his fucking head off and, and, and took it in the land of Philistine 
even after he was dead, they cut his head off and took him in the land of Philistine and, you know, was parading with his shit. But his armor bearer would not, for he was so afraid. Therefore, Saul took a sword and fell upon it. But the point of the matter is, the Most High, Saul never attacked, uh, I mean, King David never attacked Saul. But guess what? Saul, the Most High, was protecting King David. And while King David was taking care of his house, handling his business with his house, going to war to protect his children and get his, his family back, the Most High was with him. But guess what happened to Saul? Fred, not because the work is iniquity. You go back to the first precept I bought. All right? Though they seem like they're thriving like a green bay tree, he said they would sure be cut down like the green herb. And that's what happened to Saul. Is. And that's what's going to happen to America and everybody that come up against us, man. So no matter what situation you put in, your high by Shema is going to defend you. In fact, let, let me find that precept. All right, here we go. This Psalms what it was. Now, now it came to pass after the death of Saul, when David was returned from the slaughter. See, David was at war and Saul was at war simultaneously. The most I was with David and the, the most I had Saul killed. But guess what? So David was going through all the hell. When Saul, when Saul died, guess what? David became king. All right? And when David was returned from the slaughter of Amalekites, and David abode two days in Ziglag, okay? So, Yahabah Shemah uh took, tore down King David's enemies, and what? Th uh, put a crown on King David's head. After Saul was put down, King David was made king. That's what's going to happen with us, Aki. We're going to go through this hell. We're going to go through this tribulation. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to look grim. We're going to be put in sticky situations. But if we are the elect, guess what? We're going to get them new heavenly bodies. And that's going to be that crown put on our head. All right? And then our great king in that uh, ceremony that you read about in uh, Second Ezra, the second chapter. Uh, I hope I'm right. I'm almost positive this it. All right? He's going to, uh, the one, the, the scripture where it say, I'm going to just get it. Hate of uh, vain jangling. Let me just go to it. Uh, all right, this is uh, second answer two. All right, and I'm gonna start at verse 42. And I saw upon about side of great people whom I could not number, and they all praised the Lord with songs. All right, that's what we want. This is what we're living for. This is the day we living for. We can't, I, hey, we can't see nowhere, but here's what the scriptures say. Keep your eyes single. This is what we keeping our eyes single for, this ceremony. And the midst of them was a young man of high stature, our great king, Yahweh taller than all the rest. And upon every one of their heads, he set crowns and was more exalted, which I marvel at greatly. See, we want that one. We want to get... Be the body of America, translate it get into a new meaning, get them new bodies. Then we want to go wherever the ceremony at, I want to be there. We're going to drink some 2,000-year-old wine. It's going to have us fucked up and feeling good. And then our great king going to hug us, give us a holy kiss, and put a crown on our head. Because I see my king, I want to hug him. Straight up, I want to hug him. If he let me hug him, I'm going to hug him. You know? But my point is, that's going to come straight out of tribulation. That's going to happen when you're coming straight out of tribulation, out of all of that hell. King David went out of the, went through all of that hell, through all of that tribulation, and what happened? A crown was put on his head. And uh, I'm going to leave off uh, with one more precept. Uh, this is Psalms 109. Uh, yeah. All right, yeah. This Psalms are 109. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna read one through four. To the chief musician, a psalm of Dawah Dot. Hold not thy peace, O Yahweh, of my praise. For the mouth of the wicked and the mouth of the deceitful open against me. They have spoken against me with a lying tongue. They could pass me about with the words of hatred, fought against me without a cause. For my love, they are my adversaries, but I give myself unto prayer. That's the way you get out of every situation. You don't fight shit quarterly, you know. After you do what the law say, uh, do a Matthew the eighteenth chapter. Uh, you 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 if you if, with a brother, if you dealing with brothers in the faith, you do Matthew the eighteenth chapter. If, uh, if you can't get that, all you do is pray and just keep teaching. All right. If you are in society and you got a fucking boss 
It's being a fucking dildo head. You go talk to him and that don't get nowhere. You endure that grief and you go give yourself to prayer and you just keep pushing. All right. The Lord be want us to go through tribulation, dire straits, hard times. All right. That it is um, in Isaiah, the 53rd chapter, he'll say it. it uh, let me go get it. I don't want to. I don't want to vein jangle. Oh. Where it say it, it pleased him to see our great king stricken. Uh, where's that scripture? Uh, it was cut off. Richard, where he had All right, this is verse 10. Isaiah 53 and 10. Yeah, that pleased Yahweh to bruise him. You see, when, when the most high see us going through these dire straits and we get bruised, what is the pain that he's hurting isn't what will please them, it's how he deal with the pain is what Yahweh loves. All right, I'm bruising him. I'm letting all his afflictions on him and he's not going off. He's not doing what like what Joe's wife wanted him to do. He's not cursing me. He's not getting weak. He's holding fast to what I've gave him. That's pleasing to the most high. All right? He have put him to grief. And when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of your Yahweh shall prosper in his hand. But it say it pleases the most high when he sees us go through these hard trials, these these great tribulations, these dire straits, and we keep our integrity and we hold fast and we don't go off to the right and to the left. That's what King David did. He kept his integrity. That's what we got to do, man. All right. So with that, Lord willing, this is, um, sit down as edifying to the hearers. I want to get infinite honors to our heavenly Father, our great King, Yahweh Wai, Yahweh Shai, double honors to our teachers, the apostles of the great millstone, and salutation to my fellow ladies in Yahweh Shai, Kwan, Yashirala, Abba, Abba, Abba.